Hello everyone, my name is Komal Parmar. I am third year pediatric endocrinology fellow at Connecticut Children's Medical Center in Connecticut, United States. I am honored and thrilled to be here to present my research work. I'm going to present fasting ketones in healthy children under mentorship of Dr. Weinstein and Dr. Reba Woolman, who is my program director. I have no financial disclosure. Uh, this research was supported by Connecticut Children's Medical Center, which is my institution. The objectives for today's presentation include backgrounds about ketone measurements in healthy children, point of care ketone testing and their validation, specific aims of my research project, methods and materials related to my research, as well as results and conclusion at the end. So what do we understand so far? Beta-hydroxybutyrate, also known as BHB, is the primary ketone in blood, comprising almost 80% of total ketone bodies. It is produced as an alternative energy source when glucose resources are lacking. It can be a sign of metabolic stress in an individual with a glucose homeostasis abnormality. For example, children with ketotic hypoglycemia or even before hypoglycemia, sometime when untreated ketotic hypoglycemia children wake up with higher ketones, even if the blood sugar is normal. So that is uh, what is beta-hydroxybutyrate tells us. Um, beta-hydroxybutyrate level has been defined in patient with diabetes and in patient with some metabolic disorders like glycogen storage disease. We have landmark studies of fasting ketones in normal pediatric patients but those studies have been done more than 30 years ago using older assays and assays that did not separate the BHP from other ketones. And it hasn't been investigated much in infant and or toddlers. So giving us a goal to describe the distribution of BHP values in different age groups and to describe the correlation of BHP with age, BMI, glucose, cortisol and fasting duration. Another important aim we have here is to validate the point of care testing, which is available now for home monitoring. And this validation has been done primarily in diabetes patients. And we do have animal studies are available, but this, those population is significantly different than the population we are hoping to help and data in healthy pediatric patient is lacking. So giving us a goal to compare the commercially available point of care ketone meter and the serum BHP values in healthy children without known endocrine or metabolic disorder after an overnight fast. So for methods and materials, we obtain institutional review board approval for this prospective pilot project. We recruited 100 participants from elective surgeries from July 2020 to November 2020. We followed standard operating protocol that we created for this study. Um, we had defined inclusion and exclusion criteria for patient selection. Any patient age less than or equal to 18 years who is undergoing elective surgeries at our institution was eligible and obviously ability and willingness to participate and sign the written consent form from the legal guardian was necessary. We also saw an assent of a participant when it was appropriate. For exclusion criteria, patients with diabetes, hypopituitarism, adrenal metabolic inflammatory disorders, dietary restrictions, trauma, use of medication that might affect the blood sugar were excluded. For study protocol, we obtained patient data that included age, duration of the past, medical history and medication, and body mass index. We collected about three to four ml of blood with intravenous line placement before their surgery. We did point of care ketone testing by precision extra ketone meter, which, is, uh, which uses enzymatic method. The serum testing were done by standard established methods. 
for statistical analysis, we used appropriate test. For example, we used Spearman rank test for correlation analysis. We used Blan and Mon plot analysis for method agreement, and Man Whitney U test for age group analysis for serum BHP. The age group cutoff was defined based on previous landmark study. We had maximum accepted difference between two methods, which is point of care and serum was to 0 0.2, and that was defined ahead of the surgery. The power calculation for method comparison were also done, and we needed pair data of 92 samples for more than 90% of the power. Here is the exciting part, the results. So we had 94 samples that uh, were included in analysis. Four did not meet the criteria. Two pair data were missing, leaving us about 54% male and 46% female. So first variable I want to mention here is the age. The age range for uh, patients in our study was six months to 18 years with the mean age of 8.29 and the median of 5.92 years. The serum beta hydroxybutyrate range from zero to 1.2 with mean of 0 0.25 and the median of 0 0.15 millimole per liter. For point of care BHB values, the range from very uh, range from um, I'm sorry range was very similar to serum that was zero to one point one with the mean of zero point one eight and the median of zero point one zero. The serum glucose range was seventy to one twenty uh, with the mean of ninety milligram per deciliter, and I also have a millimole per liter unit uh, for the folks who guys uses that. The serum cortisol had a very wide range with a mean of 9.4 and a very similar median of 9.0 milligram per deciliter. Fasting duration was pretty standard with a mean of 12.4 hours. BMI range was also wide with the mean of 9.28 kilogram per meter square. So the most important finding we have here is that BHB level is significantly higher in children three years or younger. And here is the graph that shows us on the left side that the younger children has a, a higher ketones on the blue bar compared to older children. And this one was statistically significant using man you witness test. And it tells us that the younger children have a higher mean of beta hydroxybutyrate of 0 0.4 with the similar median of 0 0.4 millimole per liter compared to older children who have a mean of 0 0.2 and a median of 0 0.1 millimole per liter. So not that impressive uh, ketones in your older children compared to younger children. Another important finding we have here is that BHP level decreases with increasing age. And this graph shows us that here on the left side, you see there are higher ketones when we have a younger children compared to older children is not high enough. Um, and this graph showed a weak but significant correlation when we use the statistical method called Spearman rank test. And when we control this graph using different variables, for example, standardized BMI, fasting duration, glucose value, we did not find um, any difference in the correlation coefficient. Also very important to note here that the serum BHP over one millimole per liter was very rare after an overnight fast in children. Another important finding we have here is that BHP levels measured by point of care testing and serum testing do agree with each other. And here it shows that there was a significant strong positive correlation between serum and point of care BHP. And when we visualize the difference between two methods using the blunt almond plot analysis, we can see that almost 97% of the values fall within the hypothesized mean difference of 0 0.1 plus or minus 0 0.2. 
we had only three values that were above that uh, hypothesized mean difference and that difference was 0 0.3 for more precise uh, number. So at the end, I want to conclude saying that the point of care BHP meter is accurate and comparable to serum BHP in children after an overnight fast. It does support the use of home-based BHP meter in a diagnostic workup for children with concerns for a disorder of hypoglycemia. Children less than equal to three years of age have higher BHP after an overnight fast compared to older children. But we do need additional studies to define normative range will, and that will improve the diagnostic process for children with concerns of disorder of hypoglycemia. The correlation between serum BHP and different variables are not impressive, but it may need a higher power and or longer duration of fast. So concluding towards the future, ultimately expanding this work will define the difference between ketones after an overnight fast at home that are normal for age versus those can identify a metabolic ketotic hypoglycemia disorder. And this will better identify those that in need for a more comprehensive evaluation. So these are my relevant references. And I want to thank all of you for giving me an opportunity to present my research. It is my honor and privilege to be connected with all of you on this platform. Any questions that can be directed to me or my mentors and we'll see you guys all at the conference. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the conference in Ketotic Hypoglycemia International. We have just witnessed a very important presentation by Dr. Kumal Kamar and I am now very honored to welcome Dr. Kumal and Dr. David Weinstein. Hi Kumal. Hi, Daniel. And hi, David. Hello again. Hello, and welcome to this Q&A where we're going to talk about this study. So I have a question for Kumal. What do you feel is the most important thing that this study brings to the understanding of idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia? Great question, Daniel. Um, our hope is to bring a better understanding of what are the normal ketones in the healthy children after overnight fast. Um, so far, our study obviously does not allow to define the normal ranges, but it does bring different perspective. It does bring um, the values that probably over 1.0 after overnight fast is not normal. So it does open up a door for further studies needs to be done for healthy children, especially in different age groups. Um, what we can say confidently from our study that the ketone meter does correlate with the serum values. So it can be a helpful tool, especially for home monitoring, um, especially when the kids are in their routine, uh, activities and diet, you can gather probably more data and probably help them direct either they need further evaluation in terms of fasting studies or needs more monitoring. So I would say our, our goal is to define the ranges. I think we need to do that, but probably it needs, it needs more, of a, more of a study in the future. Thank you so much, Kumal. And now I have a question for David. David, do you think this study proves the fact that we are considering if idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia actually is more than normal variation? Absolutely. Um, I think one of the other important messages here is that most children after an overnight fast have ketones under 0.5. It was extremely rare to have ketones over one and even above 0.5 was uncommon. As a result, when we see high ketones, we need to take this seriously. This is not in the normal range for, for children and this is not physiologic ketosis.
you. We have got a question from a, a company called Kinexium, who are in the process of developing a continuous ketone monitor. My question is, do you guys think that this would be relevant to the children suffering from idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia? I would say um, that's a different kind of uh, monitoring that we have seen so far. We were lucky to have a, a ketone meter, especially for home. Um, now, being advanced in technology in terms of continuous glucose monitor, I think it will be helpful to see continuous ketone monitor to see what do we see in terms of physiology. Um, and may help us to find out more about this idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia kids, what is different in, the, in terms of physiology? What do they have a different and what are the differences we see in between them and, and the healthy children? So I would say probably will be, uh, will be helpful in terms of finding out um, what do we know so far and what do we don't. Um, but obviously, um, it needs it will need more studies. What do you think, David? I think this is going to be a very important tool. When I used to be in clinical practice, I and I would be evaluating children with ketotic hypoglycemia. I would bring them in the hospital, and during the fasting studies, I would see when ketosis occurred in the glycogen storage diseases we would see ketones starting to go up within a few hours. So knowing when the ketones go up can be a very important tool. So this, I'm excited for this new technology. I think it will be very important. So much, both of you. And I have a question more. This is from Aubrey. From your presentation, you suggested that it was very rare for children to have ketones of more than 1.0 mole. Our children have ketones ranging from 1.0 to 5 plus, and we are told that this is okay. Is it really okay? Uh, that's a very uh, great question. I would say it's not okay. Uh, what we can definitely um, say from our study, it's very rare to see ketones over more than one um, in healthy children. Um, and obviously, I think it's not okay. It's a marker of metabolic stress. Uh, they definitely need further evaluation in terms of detailed history, their physical exams, um, all of that we learned uh, from earlier presentation, uh, and they need attention to figure out what is going on with that high ketones. Thank you so much, both of you. Any of you have a final remark before we move on about ketones? No? Then we will move forward and thank you so much, both of you. This study will have a great impact for all of the scientists and the families suffering from idiopathic ketotic hypoglycemia. So thank you to both of you for attending here today. Thank you, Daniel.